Alright everybody, welcome back to War Thunder. So what we're going to be going over today is the IS-6, that's right, the Joseph Stalin 6 tank. Now there's not a whole lot of information out on it and Gaijin doesn't give us much information at all. And what perplexes me is, you know, it's like, oh, we're going to release this tank. Okay, that's cool. We get, a we get to see what it looks like, you know, get to kind of see in the GIF, you know, how it plays, whatever, in the limited video that we have. But the information is, there's not much. And they're asking, hey, why don't you pre-order this bad boy? It's $40, right? And we can go over the information that they do have, but if you were to look for it, look for information on this tank, you would not find much. However, I did find one nugget of goodness, which we are going to go over. So the IS-6 is a powerful breakthrough tank, which was created during 1943 to 1944 to fight the German heavy tanks and self-propelled guns. Despite the fact that after a series of tests, this tank was not to be adopted by the army, many components and solutions of it were used during development of other Soviet tanks. And this is where Gaijin almost like, like trolls you a little bit, right? When they say, including the IS-7 heavy tank. Like if that doesn't scare the shit out of you, if you're if you play other nations, the idea of an IS-7 tank on the battlefield really should. You should like you gotta change your pants if you were to ever see that on the battlefield. Literally, you'd have to like do some serious digging to find tanks that could match it. But but guess what? They haven't announced the IS-7 tank. Who knows if they ever will? They might. But they're getting awfully close. We've got the IS-2, the IS-3, the IS-4M. We have the T-10, which is basically an IS-8 of sorts. But really the one that needs to be feared truly is the uh, IS-7. It's the biggest and baddest of them all. 68 tons with 130 million. But anyway, I digress. So, the IS-6 is a premium tank with magnificent armor, a powerful 122 millimeter gun, and good dynamics for a heavy tank. This tank was equally good for aggressive breakthrough in holding important points. The IS-6, one of the best tanks on the battlefield, it imposes its own rules on the enemy during a duel and encourages allies to take decisive action. So you also get the uh, title, Soviet Hammer. The IS-6 is a Soviet Hammer, right? So the only information that they're officially saying is, hey, it's $40, you can pre-order it. It will come out in 1.67 update and it will be one of the best tanks on the battlefield. We don't really know what BR it will fit in, but it'll probably be somewhere in between 7 and 7.7. .7. Where it follows, falls on the tree, will it be after the uh, IS-3 or IS-4? You know, but there's no other information. You have the size of the gun. You don't know reload speed. You don't know gun depression and gun elevation. You don't know hull armor. You don't know turret armor. There's nothing about it. All you really know is you can buy it for $40. $40 is the cost of a freaking video game, you know? Now, obviously, the way these games work is, you know, they put, it's a free-to-play game, and, you know, the whales kind of, like, fund it, you know? That's a discussion for another day, and not really all that pertaining to what we're going for today, but it's just, like, that's a significant amount of money for a vehicle, and it's not like it's unprecedented. They've, they've done this before. I'm just surprised that there is no other information than that so it's like oh well they're saying it's gonna be the best so i'm gonna buy it so that i can beat my foes easier than they can beat me all right but um there was an article by mr herring 179 thank you sir there's a forum article i will link it in the video description he's done significant research and a lot more information to be shared than what Gaijin shared with us. Um, but it's not like an IS-3, it doesn't have the pike hull. It's kind of like, a lot of people consider it like a souped up IS-2, IS-4 of sorts, right? But, you know, and there's actually two different versions of the IS-6. There's Object 252 and Object 253. I think it's safe to say that we're going to be looking at Object 252. Because Object 253 used an experimental electromechanical transmission system, which true, which turned out to be a flop, right? But the amount of armor on this thing seems pretty significant on Object 252, or 
the Joseph Stalin 6, right? So, if you look at the armor, it's it's similar in aspects, but instead of a 100mm gun, it's got the 122mm gun. The gun depression is negative 6 degrees, so still, Russian tanks are very, very sad. They're very, very depressed. And 20 degrees gun elevation. It's got a max speed limit of 43 kilometers per hour. Engine power, 750 horsepower. Crew of 8. And the horsepower to tonnage ratio is 14.5, which is pretty decent for a heavy tank. Now, it's going to be heavy armor and angled and rounded out the wazoo, guys. It's going to be nuts. The gun mantle is where the thickest amount of armor is. It's 300 millimeters and rounded. Now, I'm, that's even better than the IS-4, which I think it was 250, right? So you got to account for that. Now, the upper hull front armor is 100 millimeters at a 65 degree slope. Driver's hatch, 120 millimeters at 65 degree slope. The lower glacis, I believe, is, let's see, 120 millimeters at 53 degrees. You know, the weakest armor is, um, let's see, the top, the whole floor, 20 millimeters. And then the whole roof ranges between 50 to 20, but I mean, most tanks are pretty, are relatively vulnerable if you get the right angle and the right dive on them. But I think that where it really excels is the turret armor, is where it kind of like it shines, right? And it has the big 122 millimeter D30T main gun. Aggressive breakthrough in holding important points. Joseph Stalin 6, object 252, buy for $40. Love, Gaijin. Right? And oh, by the way, this was used in the development of the IS-7. Are you scared yet? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of scared. The IS-7's going to be nuts. But, so, interesting, interesting stuff, right? The mass of the tank was reduced to 51.5 tons. The firepower of the IS-6 is no better than tanks of the IS-2, IS-3, and IS-4. Its armor was better than the IS-2 and IS-3, but slightly worse than IS-4. Installation of electrical transmission and facilities, the management of the tank, should increase its maneuverability. Uh, increased maneuverability of a heavy tank is a scary thought. However, this, this does not happen as a result of the large mass of the tank and electrical transmission. Well, that's for Object 253, right? So, Object 252 had been tested with mechanical transmissions of the IS-4. With the exception of the armor, he had no advantages over other heavy tanks. So, there you go. The, what, if you read through all this stuff, and thank you, Mr. Herring179, it might be the most armored of the IS lines that we have so far. Which is an interesting thought, right? Yeah, we have fin stabilized heat rounds and sabo rounds, right? But still, you still bounce off those Russian beasts. You know what I mean? Shoot, what BRs? Why don't they tell us the BR? Maybe they're still working on it. You can you can give them the benefit of the doubt. Thirty rounds for the 122 millimeter main gun. It would the D30 was a historically, or was a modified version of the D25T. Although they're saying, yeah, D30T, right? You've got the 12.7 millimeter main gun, and then on the top, and then you've got the 7.62 millimeter coaxial mounted machine gun. It's gonna be a beast. I guess the difference in the gun was the presence of a loading rod and bore flushing system with compressed air after firing. So it's like, what does that mean? Is it a quicker reload? Is it a more accurate shot? You know? Anyway, Herring179, thank you for the information because Gaijin kind of left us in the dark. But maybe that was maybe that was the marketing ploy was like, hey guys, this is going to be one of the best tanks in War Thunder. You, you're going to want to buy this. Here, here's the link to buy it. Just trust us. It's going to be good, right? I mean, especially if you like Russian heavy tanks and everyone loves Russian heavy tanks when you're playing them and doesn't really like to fight them too much. Um, and it's kind of like one of those things like, whoa, 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 this is kind of scary. You know, but 
they already announced that the T32 is coming. That thing's gonna be massive. So it's almost like, you know, they led the way with the announcement of the FV4005 for the British, which is gonna have a gun that is gonna deal with this. And then, well, not the T32, and the heavy tank T34. So, you know, it's not like, oh my God, Ru the Russians are coming, the Russians are coming. It's like, well, the Brits get their thing and the Americans get their thing. And now the Russians get their thing. So, ladies and gentlemen, the IS-6 is coming. It costs $40. Currently, you can pre-order it. Isn't that weird? I haven't, I haven't seen that too many times, where you can pre-order something prior to a patch. But, hey, who knows? We've got lots of exciting stuff coming down the pipeline. Heavy Tank T-34, FV-4005 for the British, the Glass Cannon Extraordinaire, and now... The Russian Beast, the Soviet Hammer, the IS-6. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts on this thing, and uh, what tanks are we going to need to beat it?